If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer the question on your own before listening on. We have three current carrying wires and our job is to calculate the magnetic field at this point here that's labeled P. And what we want to do first is actually note that the magnetic field produced by this wire here as well as the magnetic field produced by this wire will actually cancel each other out. And in order to see that we have to understand how to predict the direction of the magnetic field that a current carrying wire produces. So let's look at the so-called right hand rule. Now according to this rule when we have a wire which we've drawn in black carrying a current which we've labeled with a purple arrow we can grasp that wire with our right hand pointing our thumb in the direction of the current. Our four fingers will curl around in the direction of the magnetic field. So in this drawing, the four fingers are curling around in a sort of counterclockwise direction. So the magnetic field would be pointing in a counterclockwise direction as well. That's the rule we have to follow. Now, if we look at this wire right here, we see that the current is actually projecting out of the page. And so it's a little bit hard to visualize, but if you perhaps pick up your pencil and use it to represent the wire, grasp your pencil with your right hand and make sure that you point your thumb basically towards yourself out of the screen. You should see that your four fingers of your right hand are curling in a counterclockwise direction. And so we could represent the magnetic field produced by that wire by drawing counterclockwise curved arrows. And the point is when we get at point P, a counterclockwise direction would be pointing something like this. So this would be the direction of the magnetic field at point P produced by this wire over here. Now come up over here to this wire. Again, you might want to pick up your pencil to simulate the wire. Grab that pencil with your right hand, point your thumb towards yourself or out of the computer screen. And once again, you should see that your four fingers are curling in a counterclockwise direction. So the magnetic field could be drawn with counterclockwise arrows just like this. Now the point again is once we get over here to point P, if we continue to draw counterclockwise arrows, we can see right at point P, we would have a magnetic field that's pointing off in this direction here. And the idea is that this magnetic field and this magnetic field here will cancel each other out because their directions are exactly opposite one another. So the shortcut to the question is to actually ignore this wire and this wire because again their magnetic fields will cancel. So now we're left with just this single wire down here and in order to calculate the magnetic field produced by that wire we can use the following equation. We're going to have a constant multiplied by the current divided by 2 pi times a distance and they often represent that distance with an r. The distance in question would be the distance from this wire to point P. So why don't we go ahead and draw that in. So actually our challenge becomes to find that distance and to do that we would notice that we actually have a nice right triangle which maybe we can color in just to emphasize it. So we're looking at that right triangle right here. Now we know this side, the hypotenuse of that right triangle is labeled too. What we need to do is figure out this side right here. And that's not going to be too challenging because if we look at the larger right triangle we know that this was 2 and this was 2. So we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find this entire distance right here. Why don't we go ahead and call that C. So we would know that C squared is equal to 2 squared plus 2 squared. That makes C squared equal to 8. And then when we square root both sides, we would get 2 radical 2. So that would be the length of that entire side, 2 radical 2. We only want half of that. So if we take half of 2 radical 2, we would have just 1 radical 2. And so we can label that right here. That's 1 radical 2. Now we can use Pythagorean theorem again to find this distance r. So we've redrawn that triangle over here. This time we know the hypotenuse, so we can say that 2 squared is equal to r squared plus radical 2 squared. So then we would have 4 equals r squared plus 2. Subtract the 2 over, and then take the square root. You should get radical 2 is equal to r. So we're going to plug in radical 2 for r. Just don't forget that that radical 2 is in centimeters. We need to convert that into meters. So we would have radical 2 and then multiply that by 10 to the minus 2 in order to convert it into meters. The current was given to us as 4 amps and then mu with this little O next to it is a constant equal to 4 pi 
times 10 to the minus 7. So let's plug in all the known values. And when you plug those in on your calculator, you should get approximately 5.66 times 10 to the minus 5, and the standard unit of magnetic field is the Tesla. So this would be the correct answer for the magnitude of the magnetic field at point P.